First question is from Robert Bowers one. What are your thoughts on partial reps versus full range of motion for hypertrophy? Okay. So head to head, if you were to compare, and they've done this in lots of studies, right? Partial repetitions to full reps, the full reps build more muscle and build greater strength along a greater continuum. In other words, strength is relatively specific, right? So if I squat in within six inches, I'll get a little carryover of strength uh, at the eight inch mark and nine inch mark and 10 inch mark, but it starts to fade the further away I get from that range that I train within. So full ranges of motion gives you broader strength and also builds more muscle studies. Again, they show this, but are there, is there value to partial reps? Yes, there is. You can use partial reps in ways to increase intensity and volume, but really should be saved uh, for advanced lifters. I don't think this is really anything that the average person should utilize in their training. I think they should always focus on full ranges uh, yeah. of motion. And if they can't do full ranges of motion, they should work on mobility so they can work. I think it's work. a novel stimulus. You know, it's something that you can add in after you've really built a, a quite a, a quality base uh, you know, in your programming, but in terms of like, um, full range of motion reps, you just get so much, um, carry over functional strength as well as like usable strength mm -hmm. uh, versus just, um, the, the aesthetic side, but I mean, you can accomplish both things at once. And so I just, you know, w would prefer like with clients of mine to, um, go through the full range of motion as you are going to experience the benefit of getting stronger and multi in, in further in, in, in depth in terms of the angle, uh, that you're going. Is there ever a time when partial reps are superior? I would say, um, in specific ways, like, okay, uh, I go to failure and I'm trying to add even more intensity. Well, I can't do another rep or at least another full rep. Now I'll add a couple partial reps. That's why I said this. I would save this for really advanced lifters who know how to utilize this properly. But for the most part, I mean, I'll tell you what. I never used partial reps in my training with clients. Almost never. Yeah, it wasn't something that I was in the repertoire at all. Now, it, now I do, I do want to be clear. By the way, when we say full range of motion, that's very individual. Full range of motion is the range of motion that you have control over. So what that means is that if a Parallel squat is your full range of motion. If you go outside of that, things break down. I'm not encouraging you to go deeper than than parallel because you'll probably hurt yourself. But what I will encourage you to do is to work on the stability, stability and mobility that will allow you to go deeper and get a full range of motion because you're going to get so many uh, more benefits. But yeah, people like partial ranges of motion mainly because it's easier and you can go heavier. I can lift more weight. I'm glad you. I, I'm glad you get that example because that, um, that is the only time I can think that I've used uh, partial reps. But I wouldn't have considered them partial reps. I would consider them full range of motion for that client. For example, you've heard yeah. me talk about on the podcast. What do I do with a 75 year old lady that can't squat down to 90 degrees? Right. And I've talked about where I'll take a bench and then I'll even put like a foam pad on it. And then she's only she's only squatting down this tiny bit and then getting back up. That would be considered a, a partial rep, partial squat. But that's the she she has only got that range of motion that she can control with strength. And I'm working towards getting lower. So if you're counting that as partial reps, even though I don't yeah. think that's where this question is coming from, that is the only place where I've ever used it with a client. There's one more place. Strength athletes will use partial reps. To no, I'm saying where I have used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've I'm never saying used there's another way to, add, to, to utilize them with value. Again, it's advanced, but uh, strength athletes, right? So lockout, right? If they mess up on lockout on a bench, right. then they'll tr they'll train in that range of motion, or if the, maybe you're at the addressing portion. weak points in like yes. a lot of the compound lifts, yeah. So yep. you, you can like hyper focus on, uh, you know, whether it's uh, the, the pull from the bottom or whether it's the lockout portion of it. Totally. You can kind of just focus on that, but also too with like. You know, sports athletes. I know, like you see this go viral all, all the time with uh, basketball players, like only squatting halfway down, uh, for instance, based on you know their lever and based on like where they're really going to generate force uh, the most. The coach is just kind of limiting it to that. 
and, and focusing on just generating force within you know what's more usable for them on the court mm-hmm. uh, and plus like seven foot so it's like you know it's yes it, you, it's a different it's a totally different leverage animal. I mean you, you might catch me do the doing this like on let's say like one of our focus days in maps aesthetic and I'm doing you know buys and tries and uh I just did some, you know, full range of motion, uh, you know, cable curls. And then I'm, you know, finishing it off with, you know, four or five short little pu- pumping reps. And my desired outcome is I'm training hypertrophy that day. I'm looking for the pump. And so all I'm trying to do is send as much blood and fluid as I possibly can in there. I'm not worried about the plus. I'm also coupling it with full range of motion bicep curls. So you might see me finish off like that. But it is, it's such a... Um, it's such a splitting hair difference on the value of it into your routine that you would never catch me training a client with it because I don't think it gives you that much value. But at the same time, I can admit that, sure, I've you've caught me probably doing that uh, here and there. In, Who's in the a, most guilty of, of using this technique? Here? Out of us? Of, well, I mean, not no, I just mean in general. Like, where do oh, you see ta- it the most? Bodybuilders, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely, bodybuilders. But what, to get what's the their philosophy with it? I guess. The pump, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they they're so they are so focused on the pump. By it's the way, a, look, it's their at, strength and weakness, right? So yeah. it's like there's it's their strength. Bodybuilders, are some of the best at getting a, a pumping up a specific muscle that they want to yeah. target. Um, problem is they stay in that mindset. And that's why I was saying like, you might catch me do it. If I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm just going to pump the delts today. That's yeah. all I'm going to, I just want to do yeah. all these moves to get as much fluid pumped into them as but possible. That's not even, it's never, it's not even close to the majority of the way you train. Right. You, yeah. I would never neglect a, a five by five set of overhead presses. By, though. by the way, this is where a lot of, cause a lot of, this is an unknown fact. Full range of motion, proper resistance training is one of the best ways to improve functional flexibility. Better than almost any other form of exercise because when you train a full range of motion, you build strength in that full range of motion. So now you have functional flexibility, not just flexibility, but flexibility that you own. Okay. So where does the myth come from then that bodybuilding or lifting weights makes you tight? Well, there's some truth to it. If you train in partial reps all the time, Mm -hmm. you build a lot of strength in a short range of motion. Outside of that range of motion, you have little control. So you're really strong here. Outside of that, you become weak. So your body actually learns to move in a very limited way. Mm -hmm. So you see guys and girls with lots of muscle who train with partial ranges of motion. You see them try to do other movements like throw a Frisbee or turn, and they seem very limited because they've built a majority of their strength in these kind of partial short ranges uh, of motion. So that's the thing you want to you know pay attention to. But it, I mean, look, if your goal is to develop a balanced, strong body and you want to have nice, nice aesthetics, the majority of your training should be focused on full range of motion. By the way, I learned this first. Be- when I first learned this, it was because my certifications told me to train in partial ranges of motion. No joke. Like my first certification told me, don't allow your clients... Uh, to come down below 90 degrees on a bench press or don't let your clients come down below 90 degrees on a shoulder press. That's what I learned in my certifications. And the the justification was, oh, muscle activation is the same and it's more too dangerous to go lower. And I remember when I broke out of that, Mm -hmm. I got better results. My clients got better results. And then I realized these certifications really are just trying to mitigate risk as much as possible. So they're going to give you the subpar way of training thinking that trainers are too dumb to apply it properly. So here, let's just do this. It's totally safe. But it was it was terrible. I remember learning that and going, why, afterwards being like, why'd they teach me that? It sent yeah. me back like a couple and of years. A lot of times, yeah, too, it was interesting because going 90 degrees or like just above, it's like a lot of times you don't even get that real glute activation yet. Oh, on a squat, So you get no. depth. It's yep. like, and you don't realize that until you actually work on that. So yeah, the, that was always something I would battle was the certifications just limiting uh, ranges of motion because it's a safety thing for them. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.